Hey guys, this is Junior Trader, and in this video, let's take a look at some of the news that we have on tech stocks, and then we'll also do the technical analysis side by side with the news sentiment, and then we'll take a look at QQ and SPY as well. So in this video, I'm looking at Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, and Netflix, and then QQQ and SPY. So let's start off. Once I let you know, none of this is any financial advice and is only for education purposes. If you like my videos, please hit the like and subscribe as well. That will be very helpful, guys. Alrighty, let's begin. So Apple. So I want to start off kicking off some of the news and here we go. One news came just lately. So here we go. Apple downgrades EV's self-driving feature delays car debut until 2028. Wow. Okay. Apple is working on an electric vehicle with more limited self-driving features and is targeting to launch the car in 2028. That's quite far-fetched. A two-year delay from its recent projection kicking the can down the road, sorry. The tech chance car will now use a level two plus system, which requires attentive drivers in line with current Tesla's autopilot feature, Bloomberg reported. That was a downgrade from a previously planned level four technology in which cars can operate in self-driving mode within a limited area. Now, the thing is they're delaying by two years, but then also limiting the features. It's not going to be level four technology anymore. It's going to be just level two plus system that is Pretty much just driver's assistance, autopilot, something that Tesla does today. Anyways, that's one of the articles on Apple. The other one is regarding a lawsuit that is ongoing still in UK, and that is Apple requests dismissal of 785 million pounds lawsuit over App Store commission charges. Now, I will be sharing my opinion as well about it, but let's cover what this is about. Apple urged the Competition Appeal Tribunal to dismiss an up to £785 million pounds sterling lawsuit filed on behalf of third-party app developers over alleged unfair commission charges on its App Store, Reuters reported Tuesday. The case involving over 1,500 UK-based app developers seek damages after the US tech giant imposed commissions of up to 30% on app and content purchases. Lawyers representing Sean Ennis, who is leading the case, claimed that Apple has abused its dominant market position. Apple argues that 85% of developers on its App Store do not pay any commission at all, which is ludicrous. I'm not sure where they're getting num Apple getting this number from. Adding that they have no basis for a claim in the UK unless they were charged for purchases from the UK App Store. Well, no, you can have your customers from anywhere around the world, right? And then also, why to charge 30%? That's ludicrous from to begin with. That's taking away so much of commission. Guys, all these big, I hate it. Even Google, Apple, all day take 30% commission. Are you kidding me? I mean, and in some cases, they even take more than 30%. You know, 45%, 50% in all other cases. There, there are cases of such type as well. However, Ennis <clears throat> lawyer contends that Apple is still subject to UK laws as it is offering its services in the UK and therefore has the basis to proceed. And that's exactly right. I completely support, um, in my opinion, uh, this lawsuit that is against Apple. Now, as I'll show you some more, this ties into something else as well. And this is really where pain starts to kick in. Like they, these big behemoths like Apple, Google, they just, they're not happy with anything. They just want to use their monopoly to keep charging these developers or even creators who produce contents for these platforms, but they charge so much, you know, on to these creators and taking away pretty much everything. Then goes some, half of the money then goes in taxes for these creators, right? So here we go. Critics sm slam Apple as enemy number one. Oh, yeah for alienating developers with steep 27% App Store commission. Now, let's take a look at where this is coming from. So, Apple decision to levy, sorry, to levy a 27% fee on all sales originating from links in apps has drawn a sharp reaction from developers and Kathy Woods, ARK Invest analysts, Andrew Kim. Now, what is this 27% commission coming from? So, after all this, um, you know, uh, what was the company? Epic Games, yes. When they did the lawsuit and everything, they made Apple to allow out-of-store purchase permissions as well. Okay, so 
because Apple in store charges 30% now. So what Apple did, it says, okay, yeah, we will allow, but we will charge 27% on that, out the payments that happen from outside. Now, Apple argument was they do the 30% in-app store commission so to protect the consumer from fraudulent activities. Then why are they charging 27 if they are allowing out of app links, but from the within app, if the link is clicked and purchase happens outside the web store or the app store, sorry, why are they charging 27%? They are not, they can't do anything to protect anything as if they said earlier, like Apple, oh, it's for fraudulent, fraudulent activities. Well, they can't protect any, so why are they taking 27%? Now, this is where the hypocrisy of these big tech firms comes, right? It's like 27% charging still because they want to take, this is absurd because they just want to take the money from the creators. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for the creators. It only matters for these big behemoths. Just keep raking in the money, keep raking in the money. There is no limit for them. And it, it gets to a point, at least, you know, there is no balance here. So it gets to a point that it starts hurting. Look, if they do it 10%, that's fine. You know, I will be happy. Anyone will be happy. They will be like, okay, sure, this is your fair share. You're providing us the platform to host. But 30% is ludicrous, guys. I mean, yeah, and the article goes on and on, but you can read through it. But this is something I want to cover very importantly on Apple. But now let's take a look at the, that's for some of the news, right? And let's take a look at the technicals now on Apple and the price action. Look, Wall Street loves it, right? Wall Street is like, oh, this company is getting so much of cash flow. We love it. And that's what it is, guys. Unfortunately, these are like two-sided battles. So for the stock market, you know, oh, Apple is bringing in so much money. Well, but then, you know, it hurts as a creator, right? It hurts to see your money goes in commission so much, right? And I'm a creator, so it hurts me, you know? Uh, the money going so much to for no use, like so much commission, we pay end up paying through other sources as well, right? Even the advertisement that we host on YouTube and that's where like they take away like 40 50 percent in commission right so and there's barely anything we get paid through advertisements as creators but just saying okay even though that's yes there's a platform they provided us to host but I would say if they can bring it down to 10 or 15 percent that they will still make a lot of money but it's just absurd when the charge like 40 50 percent right it's just it's hurtful it's painful all right now let's go to the yeah the apple price action guys so apple is bullish right it's above 20 and 50 days moving average it's above to also 200 days moving average well at these points though i would like to take the profits right but the way the candle is forming today either tomorrow we might see some cool off we are still bullish though, but that will be a reload zone. So today would be the candle that you would be like thinking if you took the position around the areas of bullishness, 187, these will be the areas you should start starting some profits at. Yes, Apple can go to 100, sorry, $200 as well. It's bullish. It can do a pullback and keep making its way higher. That's the possibility. So you have to trade accordingly. This is more like a swing play, right? You can take partial positions out, take rest of the profits at the highs as well. But definitely take some profits in the extensions guys but as now so that's more like a swing and long-term play but as for the intraday plays what may apple do right what are the places that it could be traded potentially so on hourly interval there's a two leg of cool off that could be expected if it breaks 194 and 47 cents together with 20 hours moving average then likely 192 will be tested again and if that also breaks we might be coming down to 190 dollars so but until then this 193 up to 192 has to be taken just as a pullback even the level of 193 is can be taken just as a level of pullback now this is in a bullish sentiment right um so however so this is the zone 194 to 193 is where you would be like okay if it breaks below 194 and also below 20 hours moving average it's a downside play otherwise that's just a support and to the upside and then you have to trade level by level guys with your stop loss on the other side but right now as what i'm seeing in the price action apple is bullish all right and nothing is stopping it to do a pullback to 194 and then tomorrow just head higher if it breaks to the downside you got the play microsoft Let's go to the daily. Uh, there's no news on Microsoft that is important. So 
we'll just go up here microsoft is technically bullish right now the price action is not telling me that it's gonna cool off um, even though we are seeing cool off but the things are getting bought back up we are still forming higher highs higher lows now the pullback that happened to the level of 393 if microsoft breaks above 399 or 400 dollars pretty much it's a continuation to the upside if microsoft breaks this consolidation below 394 it may cool off down to 384 and 51 cents google i don't have any news on google as well it's a very similar play just like um microsoft google is a little bit weaker though let's go to the hourly interval and the play on google could be on the hourly interval so you can see that um, google found support at 50 hours moving average now if it doesn't breaks above 147 13 cents and it starts to break below 146 and 35 cents together with the break below 50 hours moving average then it's a downside play to the level of 144 and then we'll talk about the price action then but then possibly 142 and 67 cents as well otherwise break above the level of 147 and 15 cents for the intraday is still a long play to 148 dollars and 41 cents on google all right amazon and amazon let's take a look at that if there's some news so we'll go to the daily interval first and let's talk about that and let me see i think there was well no it's just los angeles times to lay off 94 workers um i don't think uh no new york times is what um amazon owns or jeff Bezos owns. sorry so not sure why they're reporting under amazon this thing all right here we go amazon stock looks undervalued to investors given its positive uh forward cash flow so they do some calculations here guys um free cash flow and i don't oh here we go most analysts are still positive of amazon stock the average price target from refinitive refinitive survey of 49 analysts is 182 dollars and 45 cents so where is it right now 155 so they say there's 30 dollars upside move possibly um so the levels let's see where that is well the next level you have is 163 I don't have it showing up on my chart because you, I haven't adjusted the timeline on my indicator. You can do it if you have access to my indicator. Just move this. I think this is the line. I can do it real quick. But you can do it. Just get my indicator, guys. While I'm talking about it, here are the details of my memberships. Basic Premium Elite. Elite has day trading bot. Basic has my all the indicators. Premium has Wall Street alerts. Links are in the description below. There's also a discount if you happen to join for six months. Also, my Discord link is in the description below if you're interested to join. Ask me any questions regarding memberships if you may have. All right, let's go back. The video and Amazon is bullish. Uh, pullbacks are getting bought back up. The play on Amazon is that I again trade with the level. There is if upside if it's as it is bullish, you can stay bullish on Amazon as long as it's above twenty days moving average. But if you are getting in now, then you your bullish case is above only one hundred fifty four. Get out. If it breaks below that and wait until 20 days or 50 days moving average for another support. Um, yeah, anytime if it breaks below $154, guys, this will start to form a little bit of a double top here. And then 20 days moving average is going to be our last savior. But if that if it breaks below that, then watch the level of 149 and possibly 144 as well. All right meta so i think we do have a something to cover on meta so let me actually pop that on the news on it so meta platforms bright future city analyst predict strong growth in ads ai innovation city analyst ronald J jose reiterated a buy rating on meta platforms with the price targets of 440 440 going really all-time high guys wow so all right, meta technicals. Let's take a look at that. Meta is all time highs. I think one of the levels I can show up. Oh yeah, yeah. no, it's not showing up yet. Where's my indicator line? Okay, let me bring up my indicator. Here we go. And here we go, guys, we got the levels. Meta, really like rejecting at all time high a little bit. Guys, Meta can cool off most likely to 20 days moving average. If you want to see the level, that level would be 375. It's right now not showing up here on the daily because the weight hasn't really turned from intraday levels to the uh, to the uh, higher time frames. But you can use this 
as oh well yes you can use this as well as a intraday just jump down there and what you can do is you can go to here it's high sometimes it's also helpful to remove self-adaptive level so that you can see some be read not just recent price action but also in chronological order because it gives you some of the levels that price action based on current price may not show because it gives priority to the current price actions right but then you would want to also see sometimes the levels around and below where price is not very close to as well or based off of uh, the chronological order but when you are trading or you are looking at the um, you know even if not very close to the price but anywhere all these price action if you want to see also based off of only the weight or how strong it is then self-adaptive level is the thing but sometimes even let's say not self-adaptive level chronological but which are not that important levels will also be helpful when you see the need of those right um so 375 is a possibility of cool off if meta breaks 50 and 20 hours moving average both and at least closes below that this is possibility of 375 but that will just be a possibility well cool off because it's above 200 hours moving average so technically meta is still bullish pullbacks are to be traded to the upside all right netflix final stock for this video six dollars up today uh, let's go to the daily first so netflix is acting at well it was acting choppy and we were talking about there is a reason to go short on netflix if it breaks below this range of 476 and 63 cents it never went below went above 20 days moving ever so it becomes your play to the upside netflix is trying to go bullish again so and yeah it is following this trend line guys so you can follow this trend line not just follow this 50 days moving average but that's what it is using so that's why it's very important to go trade around those levels and trend lines and moving averages for the best play even today you can see that when it was finding support at this 200 hours moving average we see these wicks right you see the price action and then it shoots up so netflix looks like it want to go up guys uh, even though we are seeing some again sell off today in the pre-market at the highs like around 500 dollars quite volatile today netflix so it's trying to go up there again but seems like guys it it, it is going to test 500 again and as it's going up and up guys i think it's going to break 500 dollars because when you test so many times and you fail to go lower there's likelihood we're going to break that resistance um so seems like netflix is going for that most of it also relies on qq and spy now wow i spent so much time guys and if you are still here guys you gotta hit the like and subscribe I, look at it so much energy i spend on my channel cover all these talks throughout the day multiple videos guys come on come on hit the like and subscribe all right now or get my indicators as well guys yeah like yeah that's useful so qq guys i think this thing has so i'm on hourly interval when you see uh, like a sell-off happening at one of the levels and then we are seeing level hold today and qq slowly slowly making its way higher it's very likely it's gonna break 424 dollars level tomorrow it is going to break it seems like it's looking very strong if any time it breaks below 421 it's gonna cool off to the levels of 413 as well spy spy is very similar to qq guys um you are watching 485 break of it tomorrow upside if it doesn't break tomorrow it's gonna go head lower and if it breaks 482 then we will very well likely see 479 and maybe also 477 but <laughs> what worries me well for bulls it's good but for bears what worries me is that when you see things stagnating and not cooling off the next day as well and getting bought up this very likely that this resistance that was acting is going to break out of it so that's why well guys this is it for this video i hope you found it helpful and valuable if you did please hit the like and subscribe i did neo nvidia amd already this morning i'll be doing tesla later today subscribe like and i'll see you in my next video guys take care bye